So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today, we're gonna to finish up that white oak that we started in the last video. And I'm sure you guys remember it. That's the one we hit the nails on. Hopefully today we'll have better luck. First thing we need to do is finish up this cant that's on the bed of the sawmill. We'll get a few boards out of that. Then we'll work on those two over there on the loading arms. So the purpose of this new table is a sharpening station for all my chisels, my hand plane blades, anything that needs sharpening. I'm gonna put all my sharpening stones on this table. And I actually bought two of these. Like I said, this one is two foot by three foot. The other one is two foot by four foot. It's gonna go beside the molder. We're gonna stack lumber on it before it goes through the machine. Now let's put our sharpening kit on the table. Here's my sharpening kit, guys. I got a regular boot tray that everything stays in and a piece of hardy board on top of that. Cause these sharpened stones get pretty nasty once you start using them and getting them flat. 
and they make a mess and that way I can remove this hardy board as needed and replace it. I got my stones lined up usually from the top to the bottom here as far as grits go. We'll start at the top though. We got 12,000. We have 8,000, 5,000. We have 1,000 below this 8,000 right here. That's a double grit stone. Then we come down to 500 and 320, which I don't use a whole lot because I'm usually just honing my blades. I usually start around 1,000 and work my way up because I don't let my irons get in too bad of a shape to where they need to be grounded down at that low grit. All right, friends, I've got a few things to get done in the shop today. It's raining right now. It's supposed to rain for the rest of the day, so it's a good time to be working inside and drinking hot coffee. This is blueberry pecan. They sell it over at farmfocus.com. I'm not affiliated at all with this coffee, but it's one of my favorite coffees. I really like it. Good stuff. So the thing I'm working on right now I'm slowly bringing my hand tools back to life. When we moved here about four years ago, all my hand tools were in this little tool chest behind me and they've been in there pretty much the whole time. And some of them got stored away properly. Some did not. This one right here did not. This is my number seven Lee Nelson joint airplane. It's maybe in my top 10 I'm not sure about top five, but it's absolutely in my top 10 list of my favorite tools that I own. That includes my sawmill. That's saying a lot right there. But when I put this away four years ago, it was not put away in the best condition. I should have put more oil on the body of the plane. We got some rust to uh, fight with today. Now this side right here, guys, let me bring you in. It looks pretty good. I've already dressed it up pretty good. But this other side, not so much. See, we got some rust going on right there, some other junk going on. A real shame, but it could be a lot worse. At least it was stored in a nice dry location. Uh, this tool chest I built, I built it back in 2015. It's got a dust, uh, a dust hood, if that's the correct word, I can't remember now. But it's got this little uh, trim that goes around the lid. I'll think of this later, probably that keeps the dust out because dust draws moisture. Moisture brings rust. So dust is actually just as bad as getting your tools wet in my opinion. But we're gonna bring this one back to life today guys because I need to start using it. I actually have a whole bunch of hand planes behind me I need to do the same thing to, but today we're gonna focus on this one and getting it sharpened up and ready to use. We're also gonna be using the Tundra Groove plane as well. So as I was showing you, we got some junk right here, some rust right there, just all kinds of just nastiness going on. Here's my favorite thing to use. It's called Gary Flex. And there's a similar product on Amazon. It's pretty much the same thing. I don't know if they make Gary Flex anymore or not. But it comes in several grits. This is blue right here, which means it's pretty coarse. The brown is fine has a color code on all the packages as well, which tells you which color is which grit. But this is a rubberized little sanding block and it works great for getting surface rust off of tools and pretty much anything. Like I said, this is the brown and it's considered, so I'm telling you guys, I had it backwards actually. The brown is the fine, the blue is the coarse. Had it totally backwards. That's a shocker. A uh, YouTuber made a mistake. My goodness. But it doesn't take much pressure at all and you can get rid of all this stuff as long as there's no pitting in the steel. As long as it's just surface rust, it comes right off. And look over my workbench. It's probably gonna start shaking a little. I need to build a proper workbench. I've been saying that for the past 10 years. Man, I don't know what that is on there, but it is nasty. And if you're wondering why these tools have been stored for the past four years, the main reason is I didn't have a shop here. At my old house, I had a little 20 by 20 building that was climate controlled, a nice little wood shop I worked out of. When we got here, you know, this building we're standing in right now wasn't even here. It's not even finished yet. You know, we got some insulation to do over there. I got to finish the doors, but we're getting there just slowly but surely. But that's the reason all these hand tools have been stored is because I didn't have a proper workshop to work out of, to build tables, furniture, all that stuff. You know, I've, I've kind of had that stuff on hold 
for the past few years since we moved here, since I've been doing all this infrastructure. I need to do more. I need to start a pole barn this year for the tractors. Got tons of stuff still to do here, guys. Tons of stuff. Man, I hate this workbench right here. I've built a lot of furniture on this workbench. It's one of these cheap little Harbor Freight benches, but it sure is light. All right, friends, now we're gonna hone the blade. I got an Eclipse honing guide that I use, and I need to set this at 35 degrees, and this little jig right here will set that. You put your clamp right there on the back, and you push it up against whatever degree you want. I'm wanting 35, there's 35. Square that up and tighten it down, and there you go. And this has different settings for 25, 30, 40, and also has chisels on the other side. This was made by a guy on Etsy. I can't remember his name. He made some with his 3D printer and it made setting up these honing guides a lot faster, a whole lot faster. Actually, I told you wrong. eBay is where I got this on eBay. If you look on eBay for honing guides and you have the Eclipse style honing guide or a Lee Nelson or Veritas, he has one for every maker. It works really good and it makes it a lot faster for setting up your angle. And more importantly, you get a good consistent angle every time you sharpen. Right there is the shaving that we're taking, and it's full width, which means our tool was set up properly. If it was not full width, and based on it coming off the jointer and the table saw, that would probably mean the iron is not square to the sole, but we're in good shape right there. It's pretty thick, actually. That's a good size right there. I'm happy. I've not used this tool in four years, and it works just as good as it did four years ago. Probably make one more pass and this side will be done. And I also meant to mention, if you're interested in these hand planes and how to use them, there's no better teacher out there than Paul Sellers. I've been watching him on YouTube for years. Look him up and you will learn a lot. All right, guys, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna move on to the tongue and groove and we're not gonna be using the molder. We're gonna use a hand plane. This is a Lee Nelson number 48. It does the tongue and the groove both. It's got a fence right here that switches around for both different profiles. As long as you mark your boards like your show face and do that face against the fence on every board, they should fit together pretty good. Most of the time when people have trouble with this plane is when they don't mark their reference face and their boards are a little off on dimensions. So everything here is three quarter, which it doesn't matter because I'm gonna reference off the same face. It's a really nice plane and uh, I just sharpened it off camera and there's my proof I'm bleeding right there. I was trying to shave with it and it gouged me pretty good. So I got this really sharp, but it doesn't take long. And if you're just, if you're just doing a few boards you can set this plane up in just a few minutes and start working. Now, if I was gonna be making flooring or 50 of these boards, I would put the profiles on the molder and run it that way. But since we're doing just a door, I've got about eight of these to do, and they're only about, gosh, six and a half, maybe seven feet long. This isn't a big deal and it doesn't take long. And uh, I just like it, I enjoy the process. 
I used to have a podcast playing or an audio book and I'd just sit back and do the boards and before you know it, they're done. All right, so I always start on the end and work my way back. There goes that workbench trying to walk away from me. And you want to take a pretty good size shaving with this hand tool right here. You don't want to sit here and take whisper shavings with something like this. It'll take all day. The reason I'm taking my hand off the front of the plane, when it exits the board, you want all your pressure to be right here on the cutter. If I'm pushing down out here, when I come off the board, it's going around over that edge. So uh, you gotta feel these hand planes and kind of learn the technique with them. It's not that hard, you just gotta do the work and figure it out. Got a knot right there, getting a little tear out on. That'll be okay. There goes that workbench again, trying to walk off with me. All right, guys, I got that side done. There's a closer look at the tongue. It's pretty good. I had a little tear out on this one, but it's the way it goes sometimes. All right, friends, got the board clamped up, got the reference face on this side. Now to do the uh, groove, one thing you gotta do on this plane is rotate the fence, put that little spring bolt right back in it and you're ready for the groove. It's that simple. It's pretty easy. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. If you enjoy videos like this showing me build these doors, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do more videos like this. I'm not always on the sawmill, I'm down here in the shop as well a lot of the time, especially right now because it's so just wet and nasty outside. It's nice to work in here where it's warm and dry. But things are going pretty good on the door. Hopefully we'll have these things finished up by Friday and over there hanging, hopefully. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.